Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We love God because God first loved us. Hallelujah. There's no other way we can give anything back to God except that he have already given it to us. Amen. How can a man know real love unless he know the love of God? For God is love. Hallelujah. He's a hallelujah love. He's a God paid love. He's the I am that I am kind of love. He's the creator of all things kind of love. He's the preserver of all things kind of love. And everything he made, he was pleased with it. Hallelujah. And he loves his creation, even right now. For he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, this is a beautiful day, for this is today that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show, where I am your host, James Harold. Pam will not be joining us, but except in spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know she desired to be here, and I desire for her to be here. I said, oh, I got to do my show. I got to do the show without my baby today. Praise God. The Lord's show. You know, we have the habit of saying mine all the time. But we know that whatever we do in the name of Jesus, that we can't do it without the power of God, the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit job is the ministry of sanctification. Hallelujah. We are sanctified. We are Things are revealed to us of our Lord and Savior through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But you know, God is also the creator. Hey, 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 hallelujah. You know, we say we was going to come back. We was going to talk about the other three manifestations we know as the Trinity. We know, but we say we was going to understand. We're understanding the four manifestations of God. But then I say, I do understand that, you know, the Trinity, amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, three distinctive persons in one being. How do God do that? I have no idea. All I know is that I'm James. I'm a Marine. I'm James. I'm a husband. I'm James. I'm a welder by trade. I'm James. I do technology by career. I'm James. I am a father. Have two grown kids. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm also a preacher. Oh, see, so I don't know how God does what he do because see me, I'm one person, I'm one being. I'm not three distinctive persons. I don't have split personality. And God doesn't have split personality either. Hallelujah. But he is three persons in one being. Distinctive persons. Hallelujah. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, understanding what? The four manifestations of God. First, I have a trivial question for you guys. In the New Testament, there was three different times when Jesus, two of them he sent out to prepare. One of them came to him in preparation of. Those three, Jesus did not have to teach who he were. They already knew who he were. Who are those three? Or what are the three instances of that? Well, Jesus did not have to teach who he were. They already knew who he was. Who he is. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to tackle that next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall. The show. Hallelujah. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My day has been a pleasant and blissful day. Praise God. God is an awesome God. If I had a thousand tons, if I had 10,000 tons, if I had a hundred thousand tons, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being God 
all by yourself. I'm glad I'm not God. Ain't you glad you're not God? Think about all the things that you would have did if you had the power of God that later on in the life, in the flesh right now that you know you would have regret doing, especially as you learn more and more about the kind of God we serve. A God of mercy, a God of grace. Hallelujah. You know, we are judged in the same measure that we use to judge others. That's why I say love, love surpasses what? Understanding. It does all understanding. Love surpasses it because love says, well, anyhow. Love says, well, anyway. Love says, well, I'm going to give you that second shot. I want to give you that third and fourth and fifth and sixth shot. That, that to do something right again. Love says, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to train you as long as I see that you have an interest in wanting to be trained, to be taught. That what love does. Hallelujah. Love to a child, love to a spouse, the wife, or to a husband, or to your mother, or your father, and your sisters, or your brother. Now, a lot of times people have things against, against their sisters and their brothers, but you ought not to. That's the very first feud that sin had produced as far as heaven is right in us to bring harm on somebody else. And I'm talking about Cain and Abel. Also, when Adam has said he brought harm on all mankind, so you can say, I could go back and say, that's the first. Amen. But I'm talking about as far as loving your blood relative. Your cousins, your uncles, your aunts. If you don't love them enough to say, I love you. You're not getting into heaven. It's just that simple. If you hate your brother, you're not getting into heaven. Who is your brother? Who is your mother? Who is your sister? Jesus, when they told him his mother and sister was outside wanting to speak with him, he said, who is my mother? Who is my sister? Who is my brother? We know who the heavenly father is. He wasn't denying who they were. He was saying that those that are under the blood, those that choose to obey the will of God, those that believe that the Son is the Savior, those are my sister, my mother, my brother. We know who the Heavenly Father is. It's God. So with that being said, understanding the four manifestations of God. God is the creator of all and is God of all. God sustains and preserves. God forgives and shows mercy and grace. God initiates all things. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is all present, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. God, the creator, was, even though he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But to us, there was a time that God was simply God. He wasn't God the Father. He wasn't God the Son. He wasn't God the Holy Spirit. Yet, God. It's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. But to us, when, do, when does God become the Father? To us, when does God become the Son? To us, when does God become the Holy Spirit? So we have the understanding now of the four manifestations of God. God the Creator. God the Father. God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
God is an awesome God. He is. And so Genesis 1 and 1 reads, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The other three manifestations we know as the Trinity. God the Father, who is our spiritual father, and we are his children. Because of salvation, we are able to experience God as our father, as a physical father looking out for his family. Like you and I, who have children, looks out for our own family. God looks out for his children likewise, even more. He loves us in a way that we cannot even begin to imagine. When you think that you master love, God can always take you deeper in love. He did it with me. He made me a power professor. I had to help. I was a teacher's assistant to the special needy. And my question to God was, why? What did I do to deserve this? I say, he said, I want to teach you how to love. I say, I already know how to, to love. He said, no, I'm making your love deeper. And that's what he did. And even though that was back in 2004, 2005, I still remember those three kids as though it was yesterday. One, two, three kids. And then it was a fourth one that was later on. I remember all of them. Two of them had Down syndrome. One was blind. And the other one, her bones would just break, just keep breaking. But I loved those kids and they, they loved me. And I still remember those kids today, just like I was there yesterday, a deeper love. That's the kind of God we serve. He's able to do all things. Hallelujah. God looks out for us both what? Physically, mentally, and spiritually, he does the mystically and by his word. He does this mystically. That's why we say that God does that God does thing. How, how do we say it? Mysteriously, he does things, things in ways that we don't understand that what he does is a mystery to us, but us who's learning how to understand who God is, who sin is, God said that he would not do anything without letting us know what he's doing. He calls us what? Friends is what he calls us. Amen. God the Son, who is set by God, he is the Son of of God. He came as a what? A teacher and a bearer of our what? Iniquities and our what? Sicknesses. He is our spiritual doctor. He heals us from our sins. He paid the full penitence for our sins. He is the perpetuation for our sins, meaning to have paid for our sins, what? In full. That's what he did. In full, he did this. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 reads, That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Elijah, also known as Isaiah, means what? God is salvation. To be delivered from something is to have salvation from that which you was once binded or bonded to and that you need to be delivered from. The things that are not of God. What's the title of our section? Faith and Uprising, Part 3. So we have faith and we be, need to be delivered from our uprisings. I'm going to read Romans chapter 7, verse starting from chapter verse 7. It reads, Paul is saying, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, 
I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, worth in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. Before the Ten Commandments was given to Moses to give to the people of Israel, they was not held accountable to sin because they didn't know what sin was. And if you're not knowing what something is, you can't have, be held accountable for it. That's why the word said that no man shall be with an excuse. Because they will be able to go out here and see the wonders of the world, the sun shining, the, the, the moon giving its light off because of the sun and the stars and the skies and the heavens and the grass turning green in the summer and in, in the spring and turning different colors in the fall and things going on. You're breathing air that you can't see. You're waking up every day. You've been mindful of stuff. You're seeing how people used to be one way and now they are another way and still yet you are refusing to recognize God as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to finish reading verse 9. For I was alive without the law once. That's what it's talking about. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. If you don't know what sin is, when you get to the age of accountability, you become accountable for your choices. God looks out for fools, children, fools and children, people who are not able to understand the difference between right and wrong. But even when man didn't understand what sin was, sin, the law of sin, raises of sin is what? Death was still taking place because people were still dying. Adam, all the way up, Adam died. Abraham died. Moses died. Isaac died. Jacob died. David died. People were still dying. Even Jesus on the cross had died. He took on our sins. God had forsaken him because God cannot look upon sin. Jesus took on sin. Jesus wasn't afraid of dying when he was in the garden. If thou would take this cup from me, but not my will, but thy will be done. He didn't want to be forsaken. If God, if there's another way. He knew that God would have to forsake him when he had taken on our sins. But him being without sin, he was able by his own power to raise from the grave. And that same Holy Spirit is going to raise us from the grave. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We're talking about God. Praise God. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slow me. A lot of people don't want to look to God because they want to keep doing what they want to do. Satan had took Jesus to the mountaintop to show him the kingdom of the world and say, if you bow down to me, I will give this to you. Jesus already knew, how can you give something to somebody who is already his? But this is what you see when you're looking at people that are out here manifestation, manifesting hate, division, evil. They are loyal to their God, who is the devil, who comes to lie, steal, and to destroy. The devil is a divider. He is a destroyer. Anybody that put the seed of division anywhere is a prophet of Satan. Anybody. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and God and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, and talk about the law, the law was good, but without the law, we would not know what sin was. We would not know what we have to have in order to be back into good relations with God. For the raises of sin is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life. So therefore, even though the law had introduced what death is in working in us, is, and doing, then also to us, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, praise God. It's not a bad thing. Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am cardinal. We are cardinal, soul under sin because of the sin of Adam. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. For then I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. The Ten Commandments is good because it lets us know that what we do is wrongful. That we are of sin, jealousy, provoking jealousy. Thinking that we are doing something great. When all we are doing is the work of the devil. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. The Ten Commandments are good because the things that I do that I don't want to do, if I didn't know that the things I was doing was bad, then I would keep wanting to do those things. But those things will keep me out of being in a righteous relationship with God. God loved us. He's the initiator of all things. That's why he gave us the Ten Commandments, because he knew we needed a Savior. And he said, I got to let you know what you're doing. I got to tell you something. It might hurt my feelings to tell you, because I want to hurt your feelings by telling you. But if it needs to be told, glory to God. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So, because I'm choosing to do the things that are of God, and not the things, my mind is on God, even though the things I do are not of God, but because my mind, my mind, my heart, God judges the heart. I desire you, God, not the flesh. That's what God looks at. That's what saves. That's faith. Knowing that God is able to save, the uprising is the other thing, the thing of the flesh, the carnal mindedness. That's the uprisings. Amen. Now, what's that fourth manifestation? We talked about form God the Creator, God the Father, God the Son. Now, let's get on what's empowering. What, what's empowering me right now to be able to say the things I'm talking about. That's God, the Holy Spirit. Who is sent by Jesus' request to God, the Father. He purges us through our faith. He comforts us and is with us always. He teaches us the things of God. He is the instrument that grieves us in our spirit for righteousness sake. He is applying in us the ministry of what guys? Sanctification. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses 13 reads, but we are bound to give thanks and all way to God for you. Brother be love of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. God is all in all. The Trinity is speaking of three distinctive persons in one being. The one being is God. The three persons are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each having their own existence and duties of the divine deity. But we have four manifestations. Because before God was father to us. Before God was the son to us. Before God was the Holy Spirit to us. God was God. The creator of all things. And what God was before then. I 
can't tell you. I don't know. God is all knowing. And even a, an eternity with God is not long enough to know everything about who God is. God is longer than eternity. God is greater than an eternity. We are coming into an eternity. Trinity. Matthew 3.16 reads, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. So we have Jesus. We have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And we have the Father speaking to him. This is my son who I am well pleased. Where do we get the Trinity from? That's one of the places we get the Trinity from. Where am I getting the four manifestations from? It was hard enough for me to believe the Trinity. Now you're coming with something else. God was in the beginning. He created all things and the word was with him and the word was God. And the word became flesh. And the word dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of God, full of truth, full of grace. And the Holy Spirit. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Matthew purgings, purges our uprisings, is the job of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. That's John the Baptist talking about Jesus. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Spirit. The ministry of sanctification working in us. And then also and with fire. I don't want to be baptized with the fire. The raises of sin is death. Fire is for the second resurrection, not the, those who are in the first resurrection. That's talking about eternal hell, the lake of fire and brimstone. For those who are not delivered from death, those who are delivered from death by the blood are baptized with the Holy Ghost. Those who are not delivered from death by the blood will be with fire. Now we sometimes Christians, we mistaken the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Are you on fire for God? That's okay. I'm on fire for God. Hallelujah. But that's not what he's talking about here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why we have revivals. So that we can rekindle the fire that we had when we became babes in Christ. Personal uprisings. Personal uprisings. We all have them. This is the sin that lies within each of us. We all have our own course to bear, guys. We need to learn how to recognize the things in us that is not of God so we can take those things to God. We must allow the work of the Holy Spirit to work his ministry of sanctification in us and through us. We all have uprisings in us that we refuse in one way or another to give up. We all do. Half the time, we don't even know what they are until somebody point them out to us. Somebody asks you to do one and two. You don't do three and four because you felt like it and make an excuse and say, oh, I didn't really understood one and two. You do what is asked and you stop. This God's revealing things to you, making things known to you. When you go outside of those things, those things are very noticeable. We all have uprisings in us that we refuse in one way or another to give up. This is the flesh not being willing Read the word of God and learn to love God. Children who love their parents learn to please them because of their parents' love for them. We love God because he first loved us. 
1 John 4, 19. There is no salvation without faith, but to confess our sins is not prerequisite to believing. Believing is to have faith. Faith is prerequisite to confessing our sins. Works must accompany our faith. Our faith must show works, but faith comes first. Acting on what we believe by faith all works. The centurion who was a heathen believed that God could heal his servant. The woman who came whose daughter was at home dying. She believed that Jesus was able to hear her daughter, hear her daughter from the moment he spoke. The centurion said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my house for I am a ruler. And Jesus looked around and said, no faith nowhere I have found such as the faith that is in this heathen, this centurion. And God, he healed them. God said, I'm glad the truth is hidden from sinners. Those who refuse to get the word of God. Those that are blasphemers. That will not get the word of God. He said, or else, Jesus said, or else I would have to heal them if they asked me to. Faith does not say, but it is the root of believing. The blood of Jesus saves. Confessing our sins is a part from believing unto salvation. Faith has nothing to do with confessing our sins, but we confess our sins because of faith. But salvation must be accompanied by first having faith in Jesus as the Son of God. Believing can participate, believers, in the power of God through faith. Partakers, yet they are not saved. Salvation is believing in the Son of God through faith. Favor is not fair, but those that love God has the favor of God. John 10 verses 37 through 38 reads, If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Y'all join us next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall the show where we love you, praise God, and where our favorite lot of the bills where we can say to you that you are so beautiful. Stay blessed, be good. Praise God, hallelujah. He's an awesome God.